Wow, this is so fun. Look at this one. The picture shows Adam and Eve standing behind a tree. Do you remember why they were hiding behind that tree? Oh yes! They ate the fruit which was forbidden by God. Once they ate the fruit, they became aware of their nakedness and hid themselves behind the tree. I remember that story too. Yes, Matthew, we all remember. Hello, children. What are you doing there? My mother got us this coloring book from the store. It contains all the stories from the Bible that you told us. Look, father. Hmm, this is good. Oh, you can read the stories too? Yes, father. We are now coloring the characters from the story of Cain and Abel. But father, we want to hear the story of Daniel before that. You mean the story of Daniel and the lions? Yes, Father. All right, then sit down and I will tell you the story. In the one of the previous episodes, I told you how Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, had plundered the Jerusalem. He looted the temple and carried many Jews as prisoners back to Babylon. They also took with them the cups and the plates belonging to the God. Minister! Yes, my lord! You must select the brightest four men from the prisoners. They must be very healthy and very strong, so that they can work for me in my palace. But Majesty, they are all Jews! Don't you worry about that. Just do as I say. Yes, my lord. In few days, the minister came back to the king with the four best men he could find from the captives. They were Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Hazariah. My lord, they are the brightest men I could find from our prisoners. They are very healthy too. Very good. Listen, everyone. All of you will get the best palace food. You must eat meat and drink wine and get fat. Yes, yes my, my lord. lord. Sir. Yes. Isn't your name Daniel? Yes, my lord. We are very happy to be selected for your service. But, but we have a request. Hmm, what is it? My Lord, we worship our Almighty God. Kindly grant us permission to keep the diet according to our laws. Hmm, you look very thin already. Just make sure that you don't get weaker and you can keep the diet according to your religious laws. Thank you, my Lord. We are really grateful. Now go and start your training. Daniel and his friends worked very hard. They read the scriptures and learned a lot about the history of Babylon. This is very, very hard. I don't think we'll be able to learn this ever. Don't lose your heart, Hanania. Just have faith in our Lord and He will show you the way. It's easy for you to say that. You are learning them so quickly. But we, it's not so easy for us. It's not that. I find their language very interesting. Now, Hanania, show me the part which you couldn't understand. God gave these four men more wisdom than all other men in Babylon. And God gave Daniel something very special. He gave him the ability to understand and interpret dreams. Daniel and his friends completed their training and they were taken to the king. Your Majesty, their training is completed. So quickly? Hmm, I'm going to test them. 
Name a creature that walks on fours in the morning, on twos at noon, and on three in the evening. Huh? Mishael, do you know the answer? No, I don't. Azaria, do you? No, I have no clue. My lord. Hmm, aren't you Daniel? Yes, my lord. All right, now answer my question. The answer is man, my lord. As a baby, he walks on foes using his hands and legs. Then he walks with his legs alone. Hmm. And when he's old, he walks using a stick. And this makes him walking on trees. <laughs> Very good, Daniel. You have answered my question wisely. You are truly the wisest man in Babylon now. Now listen, everyone. Daniel will be your leader from now on. Thank you, my lord. King Nebuchadnezzar started having strange dreams. The dream kept him up night after night. Huh? That same dream again? What could it mean? Minister! Minister! Coming! Coming, my lord! <sighs> Did you have the same dream, my lord? Yes. I'm not able to sleep anymore. What do you want me to do, sir? Summon all the priests, the magicians, and all wise men in the country to my court tomorrow. Maybe one of them will be able to explain what my dreams mean. That's a good idea, my lord. I will pass the instructions right away. O king, live forever. Head priest, who are the others? He is the best magician in our country. Long live the king. And he is the wisest man in Babylon. Greetings, my lord. What do you want to know? You can ask us any question. We have all the answers. Thank the gods. I have a very important question for you, magician, wizard and wise man. Ask us, my lord. I had been having a very strange dream for many days now. Oh, that's very simple. Ha ha, it's easy. All right then, tell me what it means. Sure. Tell us what your dream was. And we'll tell you what it means. Oh no! If you were so smart, first tell me what I dreamt, then tell me what it means. What? But... but... But it's impossible, Your Majesty. Yes. No one on the earth can do that. Only the God knows such secrets, and we are not gods. You are all a bunch of frauds! If you don't tell me my dream and its meaning within a week, then all of you will be hanged. Now get out and come back with the answers. Get out now! Daniel and his friends heard about what had happened. That's terrible news. No innocent man should die because of this. Friends, let's pray to God. He will definitely reveal us the secret about King's dream. Lord God of heaven and earth, all-powerful and mighty God, have mercy on us. Please tell us about the king's dream and its meaning. Daniel. Huh? Daniel, wake up. God, listen to me very carefully. That night, God explained the king's dream to Daniel. Oh, king! There is someone there waiting to explain what your dream means. Huh? How could someone be smarter than the wizards, wise men and the priests? He... he's one of the captives from Judah. Huh? Is it Daniel? Yes, your majesty. All right, call him. My lord. Are you going to tell me about my dream? It's not me, my lord. It's the god in heaven who told about it. Go on, tell me about it. Your Majesty, you went to sleep thinking about the Empire. In your dream, you saw a huge statue. Its head was made of pure gold. The hands and chest were made of silver. The stomach and the thighs were made of brass. And the legs were made of iron. The feet were made of clay. Then suddenly, 
a large rock rolled down from the mountain and hit the feet of the statue. Since the feet were of clay, it was easily shattered and the whole statue fell down in pieces. Huh? It's... it's true. That's the dream I had. Now, tell me what that meant. The statue, my lord, represents your empire that God has entrusted to you. You are represented by the golden head. Your successors are represented by the other parts. The feet of clay stand for the last king. During the time of that ruler, your empire will be shattered. That's brilliant! You were smarter than all my wizards and wise men put together. Not me, sire. It is the Almighty God who revealed the secret to me. He told me so that you can understand what it means. What does it mean, Daniel? Tell me. You are king for now, but your kingdom will not last forever. But God's kingdom will last forever. O oh, king, I have a request. What is it? Please don't hurt the wise men. Of course, anything you say. Many years passed, King Nebuchadnezzar died, and his son, Belshazzar, became the king of Babylon. Daniel was kept away from the affairs of the kingdom, and he was slowly forgotten by everyone. Daniel stayed in Babylon, and every day, three times a day, he prayed to God facing Jerusalem. One night, King Belshazzar was celebrating along with the wise men. The foolish king used the holy vessels stolen from the temple in Jerusalem. <laughs> Is everyone having fun? Yes, my lord, we are having so much fun. My lord, look over there. What is it? What is that thing? Someone, tell me what's going on. Ah, oh, I feel sick. What? Where am I? Are you all right, my lord? I... what happened? Oh God, so that wasn't a dream? What is it written there? It reads, Mene, Mene, Tekel, Perceive. Huh? What does it mean? We... we don't know the meaning, my lord. Huh? Call all the magicians and wizards here. They should be able to translate this. All the wizards and the magicians were called, but no one was able to tell him the meaning. Huh? No one? Minister, come here. Yes, my lord. Anyone who's able to interpret the message of this writing shall be dressed in purple robe, and I will give him my golden chain. I will also make him the third most important person in this country. Now send this message to everyone. Yes, my lord. My lord. Yes? Can you tell me what that text means? No. No, I can't. But I know someone who can help you with this. Who is it? In the days of your father, this man had wisdom like the gods. Call Daniel. He will help you. King Belshazzar called Daniel to his palace and showed him the writings. Daniel, they say that you are the wisest man in the kingdom. Can you tell me what it means? Yes, my lord. I will tell you the meaning of these writings. You have dishonored the God, and you aren't sorry for the terrible things you did. You used cups and plates stolen from this temple. God himself sent the hands that wrote these words. Mene, this means God has counted the days until your kingdom will end. Tekel, this means that you are not good enough to be the king any longer. Huh? Parson, 
This means that your kingdom will be given to other people. Daniel, I know you speak the truth. Your explanation is scary, but I will still keep my word. Here, take this, the reward I had promised. You will also be made the third highest ruler of Babylon. I don't know what to say at this time, my lord. Thank you. And like Daniel had predicted, King Belshazzar died that very night. After a few months, King Darius took over the kingdom of Babylon. The new king selected three men to rule the kingdom, and Daniel was one of them. But soon, King Darius realized that Daniel was better than the other two men he had selected. He planned to make Daniel the one and only ruler of the land. Huh? We must do something, or soon we will be taking orders from Daniel. We cannot let that happen. We must do something to make him look bad. Hmm. Let's go to his house when he's not around and see if we can find something. Yes, that's a good idea. Let's go tonight itself. Come on, let's go and see if we can get inside. <sighs> the two wise men wanted to make Daniel look bad. So they climbed the ladder to watch what Daniel was doing. Praise be to the Lord. You see that? He's praying to his God. Yes, I knew this. He prays three times a day facing Jerusalem. I have an idea. I have an idea. Let's go and meet the king tomorrow. I have got the same idea. I can't wait to tell the king. The wise men made a terrible plan to make Daniel look bad. They raised the palace next day to meet the king. My lord! Huh? What are you doing here in the morning? We have got an excellent idea to find who your enemies are. What is that? For 30 days, let's have a holiday throughout the kingdom. For 30 days, no one should pray to any god or human except to you, King Darius. Hmm, I like that idea. Yes, my lord. This way we will find out who's loyal to you and who is not. If someone who's found defying the order, then we will throw them into the lion's den. I like it, but I must consult with Daniel first. No, no, we can't. I mean, we don't have time for that. Yes, my lord. We must pass this law immediately. There is no time to waste. Here, my lord, please put your seal on this order. Hmm, but... Don't worry, my lord. We will speak to Daniel and tell him about this new law. Here, my lord, please put your seal on this order. All right, here you go. It's official now. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. The wise men tricked the king to pass this new law prohibiting the worship of any other god in the kingdom. Daniel heard about the new law, but he was loyal to God. He still prayed three times a day facing Jerusalem. Look, he's praying to his God. He has broken the new law. <laughs> now we can throw him into the lion's den. The plan worked. We must inform this to the king. Oh, King Darius. What is it now? My lord, we found someone who's breaking your new law. What? Who is this terrible person? He is the Israelite, Daniel. Yes, my lord. We found him praying to his God three times a day in spite of the warning. Oh, no, not him. I can't hurt him. He is my friend. But your majesty, the law says no law given by the king can be changed. Yes, my lord, you cannot change the law now. We must throw Daniel to the lions. What have I done? Daniel, uh, I'm sorry. All right, 
take Daniel to the lion's den. And as planned by the wicked wise men, Daniel was caught and brought to the lion's den. I, I'm sorry, Daniel. I was tricked into doing this. I know that. Please don't feel sorry for yourself. You've been always loyal to your God. Maybe he will save you from the lions. Don't worry. I won't be alone down there. Daniel walked inside the den and the soldier closed the entrance with a large stone. Darius then sealed the opening with his royal seal so that no one would open the door. You take care, my friend. <laughs> he is dead. We have won. Yes, we can rule this land all on our own now. Come, let's leave. Yes, we will come back tomorrow to collect the bones. <laughs> King Darius could not sleep that night thinking about his friend. He stayed awake all the night. And the next day morning, he ran towards the lion's den. Remove the stone now. What happened inside was a miracle. King Darius saw that no harm had come to Daniel and he was sitting happily among the lions. <laughs> Good morning, King Darius. You are up so early. Daniel, my friend, I can't believe my eyes. What happened in there? The lions were about to attack. But then suddenly an angel appeared from nowhere. God saved me because he knew that I hadn't done anything wrong. And I promise you that I didn't do anything wrong to you either, my king. Daniel, I'm so happy. Oh no. And you, soldier, take them away and throw them to the lions. No! From now on, everyone will respect the God of Daniel. His God is greater than any other God. Thank you, my king. Daniel continued to work for King Darius and he stayed loyal to God. And God pleased him for the rest of his life. Wow, that was such an amazing story. I really liked it, father. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it, Matthew. Now, shall I ask you the questions? Yes, Father. All right. Now, tell me the name of the Babylonian king who destroyed Jerusalem. His name was Nebuchadnezzar. That's right, Lucy. Can you also tell me about the dream he had? The king dreamed of a huge statue made of golden head and... Uh, and... Its hands and chest were made of silver. The stomach and thighs were made of brass. It had iron legs and the feet were made of clay. Thank you, George. That's correct, both of you. Very good. What happens to the statue in his dream? In his dream, a large stone came rolling down from the mountain and crashes on the feet of the statue. Since the feet were made of clay, it shatters and the whole statue falls down. That's really good, Lucy. Now, Matthew, can you tell me what his son's name was? It was Belshazzar. Correct. Next question. Tell me the name of the king who conquered Babylon. It was King Darius. That's very good, Matthew. That's all the questions for today. I will tell you the story of Susanna tomorrow. The story of Susanna? Yes. The story of how Lord continued to protect those who were faithful to him. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father John is going to tell us the story of Saul today. Yay! Haha, <laughs> you're so excited, Matthew. Yes, he is going to tell us the story of Saul, the first king of Israel. Let's sit here and wait for Father.
There he comes. <laughs> Hello, Jimmy. Good evening, everyone. So, children, which story did I tell you yesterday? You told us the story of Prophet Samuel. All right. And today, I'm going to tell you the story of Saul. Are you ready? Yes, Father. We are. Saul was anointed as the king at a very critical moment in the history of Israel. Philistines were very powerful and they were taking away the land that God had promised Israelites. The very existence of Israel was threatened. Israel, listen, it is God who speaks. I shall anoint a king for you. But remember this, he shall make the mighty men among you as his soldiers and servants, and your daughters will be his wives and maids. He will take over your land. He will reduce you to slavery. There will be no point in seeking help from God after this. What do you say? We don't worry about that, but today we want a king. Yes, what we need is a king. All right then, you shall have a king within 30 days from today. Gather all the Israelites at Mizpah on that day. In the hill country of Judea, there was a little town called Gaibe. In that town lived a man named Kish who belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. One day, some of his donkeys got lost. He sent his son, Saul, along with a servant in search of the donkeys. This happened a few days after Samuel promised the Israelites that he would give them a king. <sighs> I am tired. Let's search for some more time. Master, forget the donkeys. Let's return back home. They must be worried thinking about us. Won't it be a shame to return empty-handed? I've heard that there is a prophet around here. Let's go and talk to him. Yes, master. Come, maybe he can help us in finding the donkeys. Hey, look, there's someone there. Let's go and ask him. Hey, hello, sir. Yes, how can I help you? Sir, we heard that there is a prophet around here. Do you know him? Oh, did you mean the prophet Samuel? Yes. He is in town. You may find him on top of this mountain. Thank you, sir. Come, let's get to the top of this mountain. Have we reached, Master? <sighs> yes, we have reached the top. Oh, there's someone over there. Let's go and ask him. Excuse me, sir. Yes? Could you please help us find Prophet Samuel? We are coming from Gaibe. I am Samuel. Did you? Did you just say that you are coming from Gaibe? Yes. We are from Gaibe. And is your name Saul? Whoa! Yes, my name is Saul. But how did you know? God, it's like you told me in my vision. Thank you, God. Master, we come in search for our donkeys. They were lost a few days back. Don't worry about the donkeys anymore. They have been found. Come with me. You can stay with me tonight. Yes, Master. Samuel had a vision about Saul the night before. And when he saw Saul, he knew that he was the chosen one by God to be the king of Israel. 
Saul stayed with Samuel that night and they were about to return back home the next morning. Saul? Saul, wait there. Yes, master. Saul, I want to show you something. Tell your servant to go on without us. You go ahead. I'll join you in some time. What is it, master? Why did you want me to stay? Kneel down, Saul. Yes, master. Saul, God has anointed you to be the king of Israel. You will save God's people from their enemies. Master, I, I don't think I'm worthy. I come from a humble family. It doesn't matter. You will know it's true because on your way, you will find three men. Huh? One of them will be carrying three lambs. The second will be carrying three loaves of bread. And the third will be carrying a wineskin with him. And as you reach Mount Gaibe, the prophets will come out playing music and they will be chanting. The Spirit of the Lord will seize you at that moment. What? What am I supposed to do then? Don't worry. Do what you may at that moment. Like Samuel had foretold, Saul met with the men on his way. And when he reached Mount Gaibe, he saw the prophets coming down chanting and playing music. Ah, it's just like he told me. And now the prophets too. When Saul saw the prophets, the Spirit of the Lord came over him and he was transformed into a new man. Hallelujah! 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 Hey! Hey, isn't he the son of Kish? Yes, he is. But what happened to him? I think the Spirit of Lord has come over him. Is Paul one of the prophets too? Looks like he's one too. Hallelujah! The people of Israel gathered at Mount Mizbah as Samuel had directed them. They were waiting eagerly to meet their new king. People of Israel, you have elected Saul, son of Kish from the tribe of Benjamin as your king. Saul, son of Kish, long live the king, long live the king. Saul, God has chosen you to protect Israelites from the enemy. You should always remember to be just and kind and be like a father to them. I will, Master. You should also care for the poor and you should not accumulate wealth. Do not build palaces for your own use. I will never forget your words, Master. I will never forget what you have done for me. Thank you so much. After Saul was anointed as the king, he returned home and started working in the field as usual. After about a month, two men came to meet him. My king? Huh? Who are you? We are coming from the north, from a town called Jabesh Gilead. What do you want? Why have you come here? My king, the Ammonites have surrounded our town. We surrendered and begged for a treaty, and they agreed. If they have agreed to your treaty, then why have you come here? My lord, they are crazy people. Do you want to know the terms of the treaty? Hmm. They want to pluck out the right eye of all our residents. Huh? And we have got only seven days to give them an answer. If we don't agree, then they will attack the town and kill everyone. Is that so? Hmm. Please save us, my lord. We have got nowhere else to go. Don't worry. 
I will take care of this. You can return to your town now. God will look after you. Thanks, my lord. Saul assembled a huge army by threatening the people of Israel, and a huge crowd came to march with him. Listen, everyone. Jabesh Gilead is under siege, and the Ammonites are going to kill everyone in town. We must attack them and protect our people. Yay! Yay! Get ready to attack as soon as you hear the trumpet blowing. Yeah! yeah! Attack! attack! Under the leadership of Saul, the Israelites attacked the Ammonites, and they won the war in a very short time. Ha ha ha! We have won. Long live King Saul! Praise the Lord who gave us a king. We now have a king. Nobody will dare to attack us now. <laughs> Where is my son, Jonathan? Jonathan, where are you, Jonathan? I'm here, father. Put me down, please. Why did you call me, father? Jonathan, I need you to go to Gilgal for a sacrifice. I want you to move to Gaibe with a thousand men. The rest of the army will come with me to Gilgal. Gaibe, but you know that the Philistine fortress is on the way. What if they attack? Then you must take a different route. After my sacrifice at Gilgal, I'll come and join you. All right, father. I will do as you have told me. You take care, my son. Saul arrived in Gilgal and waited for Samuel to arrive to begin the sacrifice. Saul's son Jonathan had reached Gaibe. Master, we have been waiting for seven days. Can't we offer the sacrifice and continue with our journey? No, it must be Prophet Samuel who's offering the sacrifice. Lord, Lord, huh? Who is it? <sighs> Who are you? My lord, I was in Gaibe with your son, and, and, and what, what happened? And the Philistines attacked us. Huh? Is my son all right? Tell me, is Jonathan all right? Yes, my lord, he's safe for now. We won at Gaibe, but, but, tell me, what happened? All the Philistines have joined forces and they're planning to attack again. Huh? They might attack any time now. We must stay here any longer, my lord. The Philistines will attack our children. Hmm. There is no time to waste, my lord. We must act quickly. Bring the offerings for the sacrifice. I will do the sacrifice myself. Get them quick. Yes, my lord. Saul's son Jonathan was stuck in Gaibe with Philistines waiting to attack his army. Saul wanted to raise there as quickly possible, so he decided to start offering the sacrifice himself. Huh? Is he offering the sacrifice? Samuel raised the temple while Saul was offering the sacrifice, and he got very, very angry. Stop it! Huh? Stop it! I said. What are you trying to do? I, I. Are you trying to snatch the priesthood also? What right do you have to offer the sacrifice? I'm sorry, Master. I was waiting for you for so many days, and I just got the news that my son Jonathan is in trouble. The Philistines can attack Gaibe any time. So, you thought you could offer the sacrifice yourself? You couldn't wait for me. I'm truly sorry, but if we delayed any longer, my son might get killed. Huh? You and your soldiers? Did you forget that it is God who leads Israel in war? Master, please do not misunderstand me. I offer the sacrifice to implore God's help. 
Don't you know that obedience is better than sacrifice? What obedience are you talking about? Is it my fault that you are late? What? No arrogance too? God is going to take away your kingship. King! King! What is it? Many of our soldiers are deserting us. What? But why? They think that you will not be able to lead them. Huh? You can do whatever you want. I am leaving. Why are you punishing me, master? You know what your mistake was. You did not wait. You are not obedient. Master, please. Don't touch me. God has chosen another one to be the king. Master, please forgive me. Please. Master, forgive me. Samuel was very depressed with what had happened at the temple. He couldn't stop thinking about it at all. What wrong did I do? I have loved and respected Samuel more than my father. Why is he being so cruel to me? How could I have waited any longer when my son's life was in danger? Am I thinking this way because I do not trust in God? Did I offend him by offering the sacrifice? Saul defeated the Philistines in Gaibe and saved Jonathan. But Saul became victim to a maniac depression. He could never get over to what had happened at the temple of Gilgal. Master, I have brought you the wine you asked. Hmm. What is this? It tastes like blood. Master, this is the best wine in all of Israel. How dare you call me your master? I am Saul, and I am looking for father's donkey. Donkey? I'm... I'm sorry, master. Where are my donkeys? I have been looking them for so long. What is he talking about? I don't know, but something is seriously wrong. I think he is possessed by a ghost. Yes, he could be possessed. It is neither ghost nor devil. It's his own fear. Don't you remember? It started in Gilgal when he broke up with Prophet Samuel. Ah, yes. He has been like this for so long now. I hope he gets back to his senses soon. Huh? Who is this? Samuel, it's you. Stop strangling me. I'm going to kill you. Ah! What just happened? It was just a dream. Saul's trouble increased every day. The people around him brought a musician thinking that music will comfort him. And they invited David, a great musician, to comfort Saul. But this musician, David, went on to become the next king of Israel. Wow! Did he really go crazy, father? Yes, Lucy. Saul's mind was troubled with what had happened, and he could never recover from it. Did his son die in the battle, father? No, he didn't. Saul's son, Jonathan, survived, and he became a great friend of David. Father, was Saul really a bad person? Hmm, no, my dear. In fact, Saul more or less had a preparatory role, like John the Baptist. John the Baptist had made way for Jesus, and in the same way, Saul prepared the way for David. Hmm, I think his breakup with Samuel changed him as a person. You are correct. When Samuel left him, his spirits were crushed and he fell victim to depression and jealousy. He could no longer distinguish between friends and foes, and he ended up killing many innocent people. So, shall I start with my questions then? Who can tell me which tribe Saul belonged to? Me, me! <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, Matthew. Saul belonged to the tribe of Benjamin. Correct, Matthew. Why did Israelites demand a king? Israelites wanted an army to defend themselves and they demanded a king so that he can command the army. And who were the enemies of Israel? The Philistines, father. Good. Now who appointed Saul as the king of Israel? It was prophet Samuel. Correct. And what was Saul's profession before he became a king? He was a farmer. And what was his father's name? Mm, his father's name was Kish. Good, Matthew. Now who can tell me why Samuel got angry with Saul? Saul was waiting for Samuel at Gilgal to offer a sacrifice. But while waiting, he got the news that his son was about to be attacked by the Philistines. So in order to save his son, he had to reach there quickly. And he decided to offer the sacrifice himself without waiting for Samuel. And when Samuel saw Saul offering the sacrifice, he got really angry. Samuel also told him that another person was chosen by God to be the king of Israel. This troubled Saul's mind for a long time and he fell into a depression. <laughs> Very good both of you. So that's it children. We'll meet again tomorrow then. Father, are you going to tell us the story of King David tomorrow? Hmm. Before I tell you the story of King David, I'll tell you the story of David, the shepherd. Is he the one who defeated the giant Goliath, father? Yes, Lucy. David killed a giant named Goliath and defeated the Philistine army. Wow, it's going to be wonderful. We will meet tomorrow at the same time. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Goodbye father. father. Good evening, kids. Father, are you going to tell us the story of King David today? Hmm, I'm going to start with the story of David when he was young. I will tell you the story of King David tomorrow. Shall I begin? Yes, Father. In the town of Bethlehem, there lived a man called Jesse. He belonged to the tribe of Judah and was the grandson of Boaz and Ruth. David was the youngest son of Jesse and he was in charge of tending his father's flock. David was a gifted musician too. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Hmm. Hey, little one, you don't look okay. What happened here? What's over there? Hmm, let me go and see what's there. Huh? A lion? I'm not going to let him take my sheep. Hey, you! Look over here! Yes! Come here, you! Huh? <sighs> Is it dead? Hmm. David! David! Where are you? Huh? Who's that? David! Here you are. Elijah, my big brother. <laughs> David, it's been so long. How are you? I'm doing good. Tell me about you. What are you? What the? Did you? Did you kill this lion? <laughs> yes, I did. I killed it with a sling. Huh? You. 
You are so brave, David. God was on my side, big brother. Hmm. All right. Come with me. We need to reach home quickly. What happened, brother? Why are you in such a hurry? David, have you heard of Prophet Samuel? Of course I have. Hmm. He has come to our home and he is insisting on seeing you before dinner. Huh? Prophet Samuel wants to meet me. What could it be? I don't know, David. Let's hurry. It's getting late. You walk ahead, brother. I will get the sheep and I will be right behind you. <coughs> Prophet Samuel had a vision and he arrived at Jesse's house as ordered by God. God had chosen David as the next king of Israel and Prophet Samuel arrived there to anoint him as the next king. The God of Israel anoints you as the leader of his people. After anointing David as the king of Israel, Samuel left the house of Jesse. In the meantime, at Saul's palace, the spirit of the Lord had departed from Saul and he became a very troubled man. He couldn't sleep and he had lost his mind. Master Samuel, please, please don't leave me. Uh, 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 uh. No! My Lord. Huh? Who? Who is there? Master, I have brought a musician with me. I thought music would give you some comfort. All right. What is your name? My name is David, my lord. I am a shepherd from Bethlehem. Hmm. Come sit here and play your music. Thanks, my lord. David was a gifted musician. His music soothed Saul's troubled soul and he was able to sleep peacefully. But everything was not going well in the Valley of Elam. The Philistine army was camped in the valley and they had brought Goliath with them, who was a giant and a fierce fighter. Move aside! Make way for the giant Goliath! <sighs> huh? What was that? I... I don't know. I will go and take a look. Oh my God! What is that thing? He's so huge! Israelites! You slaves of Saul, send forth your strongest man for a fight. If your man wins the fight, then you will win this war. If I win, then you shall serve us. What is he saying? He wants us to send our strongest man for a fight with him. But we don't have anybody as strong as that joint. Just look at him. He says that if our man wins the fight, then all the men in their camp will become our slaves. But if we lose, then we will have to serve him. Oh, how are we going to fight this giant? We don't have anyone who's as strong as him. Where is your stupid king? Elijah! Elijah! Huh? Hello, big brother. David, but what are you doing here? Aren't you supposed to be looking after the sheep? I was looking after the sheep, but father wanted me to come here and meet you in person. What happened? Is he all right? Oh, yes. He... Israelites, where is your king? Is he afraid? Is he hiding somewhere? Who was that? How dare he insult our king? That is Goliath, the leader of the Philistines. He's been shouting like this for days now. But why isn't anybody coming forward to face him? What? Just look at him, David. None of our soldiers has the guts to face him. King has promised to marry his daughter to anyone who would kill this giant. Hmm. I will take that challenge. What? 
I said I can fight him. Are you crazy? Have you seen how huge he is? He will crush you in no time. Don't worry. I have God on my side. And as per David's request, he was brought before Saul. David, I admire your courage, but I thought you were just a musician. Do not be worried, my lord. I have killed many lions and bears to protect my sheep. Yes, my lord. David is quite skilled with his sling. He has really killed lions with his sling, my lord. Mm. All right, David. Bring my armor and shield. Let David wear them. Saul agreed to let David fight with Goliath, and he gave his armor and shield to David. Mm. Mm. Uh. Oh. Mm. What happened, David? My lord, I cannot walk with all these. These are too heavy. But David, how are you going to protect yourself? You need to wear those. Don't worry. I have God on my side. So David walked into the battlefield with just five stones in his bag and God on his side. <laughs> what are you doing here, kid? What have you got there? Stones? Are you going to chase some dogs? <laughs> Run for your life, kid, or else I will give you to the dogs. You can boast after winning. Let's fight. You have your spear and sword, and I have Lord on my side. Who? Huh? How dare you? I am going to crush you, you little dirt. You stupid Israelite! God, help me! Oh! Oh! Uh, 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 uh. What just happened? Is that giant dead? I think Goliath, he's dead. My brother, he killed Goliath. David killed Goliath. <laughs> we won the war. <laughs> we we won, won the war. war. David killed Goliath with just a sling and God on his side. He took the sword from Goliath and cut off his head. The Philistine army ran away when they saw that their leader was dead. David, from now on, you will be my personal guard and head of my army. I am honored. Thank you very much. I will be always grateful to you, my king. And as I promised, you may also marry my daughter. Thanks, my lord. Hmm. You can stay in this palace with my son Jonathan till the marriage. Yes, my lord. Jonathan, take David with you and show him the palace. Yes, father. Come with me, David. David. David, I saw how you defeated the giant, Goliath. You were very brave. I had Lord on my side. You're so humble, David. From today, we will be brothers, inseparable. My life for your life. I will never forget this, Jonathan. My life for your life. From that day onwards, Jonathan and David became inseparable. They fought many wars together and won all of them. Jonathan rejoiced at David's victories. The people of Israel became increasingly fond of David. And this didn't go well for Saul. He was jealous when people rejoiced and honored David's victories. Huh. Now what more can he have but the kingdom? I must do something. Master, our army has won again. When they hear the name of David, Philistines are getting scared. Yes, father. David must be made the commander-in-chief. He deserves it more than anyone else. Jonathan, 
Do you know what you are saying? What happened, father? There is no one in this whole world like David, and I love him more than my life. You and your love, you idiot! Don't you know that he will snatch your crown? So what, father? It's obvious that after you, he should wear the crown and not me. Stop it! I will give him the crown he deserves. Seeing that his own son was praising David, Saul's jealousy grew further. He secretly hatched a plot to kill David. I am going to kill him today. Hmm. People will think that I lost my mind as usual. Huh? Master? <sighs> Father, what did you do? Huh? Uh, uh, someone came at me with a sword and I threw my spear at him. That's all. It's okay, Jonathan. You know how the king sometimes loses his mind. Are you all right, David? I'm okay. Come, let's go. Ah! Saul's jealousy quickly turned into hatred. Saul made several other attempts to kill David, but all of them were futile. And one day... David, your life is in danger. My father is determined to kill you. Hmm... I know, but I don't understand. What have I done for my master to hate me so much? It's because he knows. Know what? My father knows that Prophet Samuel has anointed you and you will be the next king. <laughs> me, a king? I'm running for my life here. You, David, you'll be the king of Israel someday. But you must escape tonight. Hmm. I will, my brother. Thank you so much, brother. My life for your life. My life for your life. David decided to escape that night, and before leaving, he went to bid farewell to Mitchell. No, dear. Please don't leave me. Mitchell, do not lose heart. I will come back when your father changes his mind. He'll never change his mind. He has become so blind with jealousy. Let me also come with you. No, dear. That'll be too dangerous. You have to stay here. David waited until everyone was asleep and go out through the window. Lord God, protect him. Huh? King Saul has gone mad. How else can he levise such heavy taxes? It's like we are giving money for him to squander. I'm tired of paying these taxes. Being a king. That madman thinks that he can do anything. But what can we do? If we don't pay, then our lands will be taken. Did you hear what he did to the priest of Nob? What happened? Just because Nob gave a piece of bread to David when he was hungry, his whole family was slaughtered. Oh God, he has really gone mad. There is only one way out. What is it? Let's join David. He is a kind man, and I'm sure he'll help us. Hmm, you are right. David is the only person who can help us from Saul. But how are we going to find him? Saul's whole army is unable to find him. I've heard that he's hiding in the cave of Abdullam. Let's go and look there. Discontent with Saul's rule and plagued with debts, many people came to meet David. There were about 400 people who came to seek the help of David. He took these men and taught them how to fight. David, please help us. That wretched king, he took everything. My land, my cattle, he took everything. Don't cry, I will take care of you. Saul now became suspicious of everyone around him. Instead of waging war against the Philistines, he turned all his energy on chasing David. How long, David? How long are you going to fool me? My lord, David and his men are hiding among these rocks. They can get out only through this path. 
Hmm. We will catch him tonight. Hmm. It's getting dark. Let's stay here tonight. We can catch them in the morning. You can sleep inside this cave. We will keep a watch outside. When everyone was asleep, David entered the cave without anyone noticing him. When he saw that the king was asleep, he took the spear and the pitcher of water that were kept near Saul. He could have easily killed the king there. Instead, he just took these two things with him and left the cave. Did anyone see my spear and the pitcher of water? No, my lord. We didn't take it. My lord! Huh? Who is that? My lord! David? Why are you hunting for me? Look, here is your spear and pitcher. If I could take this from you while you were sleeping, then I could have done anything to you at that time. Can't you still believe that I'm not your enemy? He's right. What have I done? David, my son, you are far more righteous than me. I will not harm you anymore. Saul realized his mistake and went back. But as soon as he reached his palace, he got a terrible news. <sighs> my lord, what is it? Master, the Philistines are here. What? Yes, master. An immense army of Philistines have camped in Ephek. Are you sure? Yes, master. I have seen them with my own eyes. Their army is huge. Don't lose your heart seeing their numbers. God will hand them over to us. Huh? No, Jonathan. Why are you looking worried, father? I think... I think this is going to be our last war, my son. Your mind is troubled again, father. Don't lose your hope. It's not that. I'm sure about this. Last night, Prophet Samuel came and told me that God has abandoned us. Father? Yes, my son. I'm sorry for everything that I did. What Saul told him was true. Israel lost the war with the Philistines. Saul's three sons, including Jonathan, were killed. Ah! <sighs> it's all over now. I... <sighs> I'm not going to let the Philistines catch me alive. Master! Who are you? I'm coming from the Israelite camp. We lost a war with the Philistines. And... And... And what? Tell me now. And the king and all his sons were killed. Israel is scattered to pieces now. What? No! When David heard the news, he mourned and wept until evening for Saul, for Jonathan and others. Even though Saul had tried to kill David, David honored Saul as God's anointed one until the end. Father, did Jonathan also die in the battle? Yes, Lucy. Jonathan too died in the battle. So, shall I ask you a few questions from the story? Yes, Father. Hmm. Let's see if you can recall this. How was David and Ruth related? Me, Father. Yes, George. Tell me. David was a grandson of Obed who was a son of Ruth. Hmm, you have a good memory, George. Now, what was the name of David's tribe? It was Judah. David belonged to the tribe of Judah. That's correct, Matthew. And the next question, how did David come to the palace of Saul? David was brought to the palace of Saul to play music. Saul's soldiers thought that the music would soothe Saul's troubled mind. Very good, Lucy. Now tell me the reasons why Saul started hating David. David was winning all the battles and he was respected by everyone. And when Saul came to know that God had chosen David to be the next king, he started hating David even more. That's correct. Now that's all for today. 
I will tell you the story of King David tomorrow. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye, Father. Oh, I hope Father John come quickly. Yes, I want to hear the story of Samuel so much. Me too. Hey, look, he is coming. Hello, kids. Were you all waiting for me? Yes, Father. We wanted to hear the story of Samuel so much, so we came here early. Hmm, that's good. Come, let's sit there. Do you remember what I told you about judges in the Bible? Yes, Father. Judges were the liberators sent by God to free Israelites. Very good, George. And can you name any one judge from the Bible? Hmm. Samson was a judge, wasn't he? Yes. Samuel too was a judge. He was the last and the greatest of the judges who ruled Israel. In the history of Israel, only Moses excelled him in importance. Now listen carefully. A long time ago. A long time ago, there lived a man called Elkanah in town called Rama. He had two wives, Hannah and Penina. Hannah was Elkanah's favorite, but she had no children. Penina had children, and every opportunity she used to insult Hannah for being childless. Come on. It's getting late. We have to walk quickly. Penaina, you look tired. So, I can carry the child for a while if you would like. No. I will carry him myself. Come on, Penaina. Shiloh is still a long way off. Let her carry the child for a while. No, I am not going to let this barren woman hold my child. Oh. Why are you being so cruel, Penaina? Lord God, how long do I have to bear this shame? Help me, God. Let's eat and rest for a while here. We'll offer the sacrifice in the afternoon. Come on. Let's make something to eat. <laughs> Where is Hana? How would I know? Hana. Hana, why are you crying? Uh, what else can I do other than to cry? Even our God has abandoned me. Don't worry. It's all right. Don't you realize that I love you more than anything else in this world? I know, dear. Come now, the lunch is ready. Let's eat something. All right. While they were preparing the meat for sacrifice, one of the servants of the priest came to them. What is that? Who are you, sir? I am the servant of the priest. Mmm, this meat looks delicious. No, sir, stop. What are you doing? That meat is for the offering. You should give the offering to the priest first. You can offer whatever is left to the God. The priests are getting so corrupt here. Lord God, look humbly upon your handmaid. If you would lift my shame and give me a son, I shall dedicate him to your service. Who is that woman? Who are you? What are you doing here? My lord, my name is Hannah, wife of Elkanah. Why are you crying, dear? Please don't misunderstand me, lord. I was pouring out my soul before God. Hmm. Don't worry, Hannah. Go in peace. May God bless you. God heard Hannah's prayer and blessed her with a son, and she named him Samuel. Oh, my son, thank you, God. I will call you Samuel. 
Hannah had waited so long for this child and she loved him so much but she remembered the promise she made to God Hannah was an honest woman and when Samuel turned 5 she took him to Shiloh Mother Yes son Where are we going Mm We are going to Shiloh where the ark of covenant is And why are we taking this ox This is an offering to our God It's getting dark Walk quickly Samuel Coming father You you Don't you don't you remember me Lord I am the woman who cried and prayed for a child Ah I remember you You look so happy now Yes yes I am God answered my prayer Samuel come here Yes mother Lord It was for this child that I prayed. I have made an oath to dedicate him to the service of our God. Hmm, dear, your faith is so deep and your sacrifice is great. May the Lord let his face shine upon you. May he reward you with other sons and daughters. Thank you, father. Am I not going to see you again? Don't worry my son I will come to visit you often At first Samuel missed his mother a lot but after a while he was glad to be able to serve God in the sanctuary Samuel Yes master Come with me I will show you something Son that is the sanctuary lamp It will be your core to keep that light all the time. This lamp is so beautiful. Thank you, master. Hmm. Like this lamp, may your faith shine like this always, my son. In the meanwhile, Hannah gave birth to more sons, and every year she made it a point to visit Samuel. Samuel my son mother how have you been Samuel I am doing well mother master is so good to me Hey little brother you have grown up here take this Samuel I made this for you Wow this is so beautiful thanks mother Hmm you must keep your life as pure as this white dress my son I will mother Master is teaching me a lot of new things and I'm really happy here. It is so good to see you my son. May God bless you. One night, Samuel was sleeping when he heard a voice. Samuel. Samuel. Huh? Who was that? Master, master. Huh? Hmm. What is it, Samuel? Master, I heard you calling me. Huh? I didn't call you. It must be a dream. Say your prayers and go back to sleep. Huh? I'm sure I heard someone calling my name. Samuel said his prayers and went back to sleep. But after a while, he heard the same sound again. Samuel. Samuel. Huh? Master? Master, master, I heard you calling me again. No, Eli. I didn't call you. You must have dreamed again. Didn't you say your prayers? Yes, master, I did. Don't worry, my son. Say your prayers again and get back to sleep. But master, I'm sure. It's just a dream, my son. Go on now. Get back to sleep. All right, master. But after a while, he heard the same voice for the third time. Samuel. Samuel. Huh? I did not just dream that. Master, master. Huh? Did you hear the voice again? Yes, master, I did. Hmm. Son, go back to sleep now. If you hear the voice again, 
then you should say speak lord thy servant is listening i will say that master samuel did not realize that it was the lord who called him after some time god called his name again samuel samuel huh speak lord thy servant is listening samuel i am going to punish israel for her sins I will carry out against Eli everything I have spoken because he has not corrected his sons I will punish his house <sighs> Are you awake master Oh Samuel come here My son what message did Lord give you Don't hide anything from me Master, it he said. Tell me, my son, what did Lord tell you? God is going to punish your house, master. No offerings or sacrifices is going to save you. Ah, I knew this was coming. My sons, they are so wicked and cruel. I am sorry, master. Don't worry, my son. It was the voice of God. Let him do what he thinks good. From that day, Samuel was held in great esteem as the prophet of God. He accompanied Eli in all his course, but Eli's sons refused to follow the path of God. Master Phineas, my son, what brings you here? Master, we are being attacked by the Philistines. Our soldiers were defeated at Aphek. Hmm. God is abandoning us. I believe that we lost because the ark of God was not amidst us while we were fighting. What do you want to do now? Please let us take the ark to our war camp. No, this is like testing our God. What you should be doing is to plead for God's help. What? Mind your own business, kid. We adults will decide what to do. Huh? Why are you carrying the ark all the way to battlefield? Is it because you think our God's hand is short? How dare you? Who are you to question the priests? You idiot! Phineas, I think there is a point in what Samuel is saying. Are you supporting him, master? I'm saying that what Samuel is saying is true. You are doubting our God's power. Ha! Huh. You have become old. Anyway, I'm taking the ark whether you are love or not. Phineas, come, let's take the ark to the camp. Don't mind them. Are you going to take the ark without discerning his will? Get lost you. Phineas, please don't. But Phineas didn't listen to Eli. They took the ark to the battlefield. Master, the temple is empty. You shouldn't have let them take the ark. What could I do? You saw them. They would not listen to me. It's been many days now. Did you get any news from them? No, and I'm scared. Master, master. Who? Who is that? He is the soldier who was with Phineas. Oh. I hope he has come with some good news. Master, <sighs> what is it? Your sons, we lost everything, master. What happened to my sons? Tell me, what happened? The Philistines captured the ark and they they killed your sons. No! Master, no! Hearing about his son's death, Eli too died that day. Philistines took the ark to Asdod and set it down beside Dagon, their god. But the next day, what? Who broke the neck of our god Dagon? Who did this? Whoever did this must be punished. My lord, I think I think the ark is responsible. Hmm. That must be true. 
We kept the ark in this room yesterday, and today we find our god with his neck broken. Hmm, it could be true. Take this ark to God. I don't want to suffer the wrath of the God of Israel. Yes, my lord. But wherever the Philistines took the ark of God, they were struck by severe plague. And finally, the Philistines decided to send the ark back to Israel. Hey, look! That's our ark of God. Are those Philistines bringing back the ark? I think so. I heard they were struck with plague and disasters wherever they took the ark. Then that must be the reason why they are bringing it back. There comes the ark. <laughs> God hasn't abandoned us. Come, let's see where they will stop. The people brought back the ark to the house of Abinabad. Years passed and the Philistines continued their cruelty towards Israelites. God has abandoned us. That's why the Philistines are getting so strong. We are paying two-thirds of what we make as taxes. How are we going to survive? And what about their soldiers? We have to hide ourselves whenever we see them. Hmm. Don't you realize this even now? God is punishing you for your infidelity. Why are you worshipping the idols? Don't you know that it's against God's law? We... we are sorry. Repent and return to God. Gather all people to Mizbah on the seventh day from now. Yes, Master. We will inform everyone. Many people came to Mount Mizpah to hear Samuel speak. But the Philistines too heard about the gathering. They knew it was a great opportunity to kill many Israelites and they marched to attack them. By worshipping idols, you are committing a great sin. Today, you will spend the day in fast and prayer. Mister! Mister! What happened? Mister, the Philistine army is coming. Oh no, we are doomed. Calm down, don't worry. God will protect us. God, once you saved our fathers from the hands of Pharaoh. Now, look kindly upon this people and save us from the hands of this arrogant army. Samuel's prayers and he routed the army of Philistines. Oh no! The gods are coming against us! It is the God of Israelites! Run for your lives! Run! Run! They are gone? <laughs> they ran back! Thank you, Samuel. You saved our lives. Master, you are a true prophet. Thank you. I did not. Our mighty God saved us. For a long time, Samuel ruled Israel. As long as the people obeyed him, there was peace and jest in the land. But when he became old, the people of Israel resorted back idol worship. Did you see the army of Philistines? Yes. So strong and disciplined. Those Philistines are getting stronger every day. Ha! Huh. Don't you realize this? They have kings to lead them, and that's why they are so strong. Hmm. What you say is correct. We are weak because we don't have a king. There is only one way out. We need a new king. But... Where do you think we can find an apt person? Let's go ask the prophet Samuel. But will he let us? Huh? We must have a king at any rate. 
the man took the elders and went to talk to Samuel. Master, the Philistines will soon take over our land. Hmm. Don't you understand? No one but you are to be blamed for this. You had abandoned our God and his commandments. All this talk of God will only lead us to slavery. Yes, what we need is a king who can lead us. Master, see the Philistines and Amorites. They are conquering other lands because they have a king. But listen to me. You are not like other people. Our Lord God is your king. There he's starting again. Was it a king who liberated us from Egypt? Did we have a king to capture the promised land? Stop! Those are just tales from the past. Then what about what happened at Mount Mizpah? Was it a king who saved you from the Philistine army? You saw that yourself, didn't you? If you are not willing to anoint a king, then we will be forced to resort to other ways. <laughs> All right, let me check the will of God. You can come back tomorrow and I will inform you. Huh? Come, let's leave. God, how am I going to control these people? They won't listen to me anymore. I'm getting old and Israel is getting weaker every day. Maybe there is some truth in what they are saying. Hmm. King and army, could it be possible that God is speaking through his people? No, isn't God the king of Israel? Lord, please show us the way. The next morning, when people gathered outside temple gates to listen to Samuel, he made an announcement. Israel, listen, it is God who speaks. I shall anoint a king for you. But remember this, he shall make the mighty men among you as his soldiers and servants, and your daughters will be his wives and maids. He will take over your land. He will reduce you to slavery. There will be no point in seeking help from God after this. What do you say? We don't worry about that, but today we want a king. Yes, what we need is a king. All right then. You shall have a king within 30 days from today. Gather all the Israelites at Mizpah on that day. The story of Samuel doesn't end here. He played a crucial role in the history of Israel. So, did you like the story? Wow! Samuel's story is so inspiring. Yes, George. He wept with his people in their disasters. He prayed for them and offered sacrifices on their behalf. He taught them the law of God faithfully. Samuel was a great prophet. Now, shall I ask you a few questions from the story I told you? Yes, Father. What was the name of Samuel's mother? Hmm, her name was Hannah. Right, Matthew. And Lucy, can you tell me what promise did Hannah make to God before Samuel's birth? She made a promise that if she had a son, then she will dedicate him to the service of the Lord. Very good, Lucy. Hmm, now tell me, what were the two crucial moments in the life of Samuel? I can tell you the first one. Yes, George, tell me. When the Philistines defeated Israel and took the ark, it was Samuel who gave hope and courage to his people. The people of Israel listened to him and turned to God. That's correct, George. And who can tell me the second one? 
Do you know the second one? Hmm. We don't know the answer, father. Oh, right. I haven't told you that story yet. All right. When people of Israel cried for a king, it was Samuel who appointed a king. And that was the second most important moment in Samuel's life. A king? But wasn't the people of Israel supposed to follow only God? That's true. Samuel was torn between the demands of Israelites for a king and his own faith in God. Even when he appointed a king, he did not fail insist on the sovereignty of God and his authority over people. Now I want you all to memorize these words that I'm going to tell you. These were the words that Samuel said when God spoke to him. Repeat this with me. Speak, Lord. Thy servant is listening. Speak, Lord. Thy servant is listening. That's very good. It's time for me to leave. We'll meet again tomorrow. Father, what story are you going to tell us tomorrow? Hmm. I'll tell you the story of the first king of Israel, the story of King Saul. Wow, the story of King Saul. Thank you, Father. Goodbye, children. Goodbye, Goodbye Father. Father.